You're listening to the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. This episode is titled, How to Truly Be Happy. A lot of us, I think all of us, not just a lot, but a lot of us want to be happy, but yet we find ourselves in emotional states of not being happy. Now, the title of this episode is How to Truly Be Happy. The best that I can do in this episode is to give you food for thought and to start moving you on your way. Because being truly happy is not a matter of you getting more things in life, acquiring more things, even becoming more things. Being truly happy is a matter of releasing things in your life. Most of us don't even understand what it means to be happy because as we've learned and as we experience happiness as a being, a human being, many of us think that happiness is an emotion. It's a feeling. And true happiness is not an emotion. It's not a feeling. Blissful happiness is a frequency. It's a state of consciousness. It's a state of being. And that's what I want to talk with you about in this episode. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. You know, being happy, all of us want to be happy. You know, we hear this throughout our entire life. You know, even songs, what is it, Bob Marley? You know, be happy. And we hear... You know, even look at look even look at the the song Happy Birthday. The song is not try to be happy birthday or have a shitty birthday. I mean, it's happy birthday. How about this one? Happy wife, happy life. Or, you know, be happy. And this is what we look for. We look for this state of happiness, yet most of us do not have it. So as I said in the introduction, that so many of us, we struggle trying to be happy because we think that being happy is an emotion. It's the way that we feel. I feel sad today. I feel happy today. And happiness is not an emotion. Happiness is a realization of self. Happiness is a state of consciousness which is all frequency. Happiness is about knowing yourself. And as I said, it's about realization, but realizing even what it means to be. I want to go a lot of different places in this episode. And I'm going to talk about higher states of happiness. And I want to talk about lower states of happiness. And what I mean by that is a higher state of happiness would be frequency and vibration and consciousness. And you can even call it, for example, um, spirituality, essence of you. And then the lower aspect of you is the ego personality. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever noticed this, but being happy is not about being happy at a soulful level. Being happy for all of us and the way that we have learned to define happiness is all about being happy at an ego, greedy, personality, 
human experience level. And if we're trying to find happiness by living exclusively in the ego and the 3D and the personality and at that level, it's going to be very hard to find happiness in this life because this life is full as, you know, as you know, ups and downs, trials and tribulations, things that challenge us, all kind of obstacles in life. And if we're living our life, when you hear, you hear me say, be happy, and we're trying to live our life, trying to be happy from the 3D ego personality, that just ain't going to work. It's not going to be easy for us to do. And candidly, I have never in my lifetime, I've never met anyone that's been able to, to create blissful happiness living from the 3D ego. You know, what prompted this entire episode was my brother-in-law, Don Javier, because he has always said to all of us that work with him, and he's said it to me now for 20-something years, be happy. Go through your days happy. And as I look at him, honestly, candidly, because I know that, you know, you probably don't know me personally. And there are even some people who think that my brother-in-law, Don Javier, is not real. They think he's some apparition or they think he's a metaphoric, you know, metaphorical like rich dad, poor dad, Robert Kiyosaki. There's a rich dad and there's a poor dad and one is metaphorical meaning the rich dad is metaphorical for Kiyosaki. Well, this is my brother-in-law. I mean, this is my brother-in-law in flesh and blood, but he's also a sorcerer and a shaman. And all the years that I've known him, which has been, you know, almost 30, 30 years now, I've always seen him as happy, being happy. No matter how he's physically feeling and with the changes on the planet, he's quite often not feeling well physically. And if you look at him, you can tell that dude's going through a lot energetically. He's going through a lot physically and especially with solar storms, solar flares, um, eclipses, things like this. They're very challenging for him physically. But you know what I've noticed and I've seen over the years? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him because in my experience of him and with him for so many years, he is always, 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 and in my experience, all the time, happy. I've never seen him one time in 30 years not happy, no matter what's going on around him and his physical environment. No matter who does this or who does that or this person got into this. It just doesn't matter to him. He doesn't get into it. And what I have found is that to be happy, to be truly happy, or at least, and here's where I want to help you in this episode, working that direction. Because candidly, this is a lifetime, it's a lifetime thing. It's a lifetime worth of, of, of focus and dedication and effort. But as I said earlier, you're not going to find it in ego. You're not going to find it in your name personality, meaning John or Bob or Sue or Prabhu or, you know, this person or that. You're not going to find it there. So for you to truly, truly find the happiness that you want in life, that's going to require self-realization and evolvement of yourself. And specifically, as I said earlier, it's not about getting something because many times in, in our culture, in our world, we think, oh, I will be happy when I get, and I'm trust me, I used to be there. I will be happy when I have the college degree in hand. I will be happy when I find a home. I will be happy when I buy a Porsche. I will be happy when I find somebody to date. I'll be happy when I get married. And I'm just laughing because something that came to mind is many times people will say, I will be happy when I get a divorce, not married, the opposite of that. But I've recognized over the years, happiness does not come from things. Because in my life, in my physical 3D life, I've had a lot of things and a lot of things that people aspire to. 
especially 3D things. I mean, I've had luxury cars and sports cars and Porsches and Mercedes and and all these kinds of things. And I've had expensive watches and, you know, there's more expensive watches, but even like I have a Rolex and I have a, an Omega and I've had different watches over the years. And, you know, my home, I live in a, an extremely high end home, but you know what? None of it brings any happiness. It might bring a little fun. It might bring a little convenience, but in terms of happiness, you know, I often laughed at, laugh at because I heard somebody say, to a friend of mine, what's it like to be rich? And he said, it's the same thing as being poor, but it's simply easier. And I look at when I was monetarily poor many years ago, I mean, all the good times that I had and the friends and different things that I had, and I was pretty much happy even when I wasn't what's considered wealthy today. So it's not about things. And it's not about the relationships and it's not about the money. So as you're listening to me, think about all the things that you're looking for in your own life, all the things that you think, oh, okay, I'm happy because I have X, Y, Z, or I'm happy because people did things my way, or I'm happy because I got X, Y, Z. They're all fleeting. They're all temporary. And we have to start recognizing, which is what I really, really, it's my goal in this episode, to just give you food for thought, to start thinking about happiness in a new way. And happiness is not the when I, happiness is basically the realization of I. It's the soulful realization of I. Now, the question is, what things make you unhappy. Consider that for a moment. What things make you unhappy? Ponder that now. Things. What things? Next, what places make you unhappy? I almost started giggling because we're in the beginning of 2024 and many of us all around the world have gone through holidays And we're like, holy mackerel, I cannot believe we stayed that long at grandma's house and all the family and all this kind of stuff. And cousin Bob did this and Susan did that. I could not wait to get out of there. I cannot wait till this is over. Places, places, places. What places do not make us happy? How about this? Food. But how about this one? Lack of food. Now, I also want to point out, this is not for people that are food deprived or are, are, or are literally having you know, financial challenges and they're scrounging for food. I want to be very clear about that. And I understand there is some, obviously, some biology and chemistry to food as well, um, glucosamine and different things and sugar in the body. But what I want to point out is, oh, that's not what I ordered. I didn't want to go there. I don't like this. I don't like that. What about this? Relationships, having them and not having them. And then finally, situations. What kinds of situations are you unhappy about? And even I, you know, as I thought about this episode, even as I give you these categories, I think about Don Javier many years ago, and I have been in every one of these situations with him. And again, when it comes to situations and food and people and places and things and circumstances, I have never seen him ever unhappy. Generally, he's giggling and smiling. All the while, those of us around him are like, candidly, we're like, fuck this shit. You know, I mean, I've seen him happy all the time, all the time. And it's a matter of evolution. How about this? What about behaviors? And when I say behaviors, worrying is a behavior. What about expectations? So, you know, what expectations do you get into that you're the one that gets into the expectation and then you're not happy about something didn't happen in a certain way because of your expectation? What about worry? Because worry is nothing more than a state. Worry doesn't exist anywhere except in the mind. It's not out in the air, so to speak. Worry is a state of fear or anxiety about potential 
problems. Again, many of us feel bad and we're definitely not happy because we are engaged in worrying about something. And worrying is nothing more than any emotional, again, notice emotional state of fear and anxiety about potential problems. Now, fear and anxiety and potential problems, are those all ethereal? Are those all soulful? Or all, are those all 3D? How about this? When we're not feeling happy, we are into also getting into emotional states about anger and shame and guilt and resentment and greed and fear and jealousy and envy and all the things that when we live as a human and we identify as human, we get into. These are all tied to the human body and not the soul. You know, as I said, I'm going to hop around that if I didn't say it, I'm saying it now because this isn't like, a, oh, I can just slap together a podcast. Here's the concept and here's, here's the solution. Because even the solution, which is soulful recognition, which I'll talk about in a bit, even the solution can take, it can take us a lifetime because like even in the transformational coaching program, People enroll in TCP because they think it's about getting something, getting more in life. It's not about getting more in life. It's about releasing all the things that keep you from creating, attracting, and having more in life. So as I said, I'm going to hop around. Remember, I remember many years ago, and I questioned it for a long time. Don Javier said there are only two emotions, and everything else is a degree or a variation of those emotions. And those two emotions are, but not in the way you understand one of them, those emotions are love and fear. So a little simple thing that you can start doing now, start thinking about this, to kind of just start putting perspective on what's taking your happiness away is when you are in a reactive emotional state, basically, when you're feeling bad about something, when you're worried, when you're in a negative emotional state, simply ask yourself, is this love or is this fear? Is it love or is it fear? And when you look at all the negative emotions in your life, ponder that. I mean, all these negative things. Notice what I said, negative emotions. You notice no one ever walks around and says, oh, you know, hey, how are you doing today? And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm in a negative frequency today. <laughs> I'm in a negative vibration today. We're not, we're not that way. We're basically, I'm in a shitty mood today. I feel bad today. And then notice what we do. We many times, at least in our mind, if not to other people, we go on and I'm upset because my wife did this and my husband did that. And I can't believe the shit the kids did. This person did this, that person did that. And I am not happy about it. It's all ego personality based. And again, I'll get there in just a minute because I want to give you some questions to ask yourself about really what are you attaching to with your ego personality? Because again, I, I wish I could wave a magic wand and voila, you know, shazam. And automatically you're like, oh, okay. I dropped all of my negative emotions like a bag of skin, an old suit, so to speak. And I dropped it off and I left it. And now I'm a happy camper. I wish even in my own life, it would be nice if it were, and it may be, Maybe I'm not there yet. I mean, I'm not a sorcerer. I'm not a shaman. And it may be. And even though I work with a shaman, a real shaman, it's been a process. And I have the good fortune of being put through a lot of different things that force me to let go of a lot of my attachments. And I mean, I have two choices a lot of times working with a shaman. And it all, it used to candidly, it used to piss me off when I didn't understand many years ago, 20 years ago, when I would be in a lot of pain that the shaman would put me in and then he would be indifferent to it. And I would sit here, it's kind of like I'm wallowing in the mud 
face down. I'm going to use a metaphor that's very kind of graphic. But imagine you're outside in the cold, you're shivering face down in the mud, rolling around in your own vomit. I mean, there have been times when I've had situations in my life that if we're talking about happiness and unhappiness, they would be like the metaphor that I gave you. And my brother-in-law would be completely indifferent about it. And <laughs> I'm laughing at this because many years ago, he might have even a time or two in a, in a very good-hearted way kind of chuckled at it. And that would piss me off even more many years ago. And I recognized he was doing this as part of my training to help me let go of these things, these attachments, whether I'm feeling good, whether I'm feeling bad, what my day's like, this, that, and the other. And my partner recently said to me, this has been a really, in terms of 3D, the hardest year, 2023, the one we just left, it's been the hardest year in every single area of my life. I'm healthy, but that's been pretty, that's not been all that hard like it was in 2020, but it's been a really, really hard year by most people's guesstimations and estimations of what a hard year would be. And I look around and I'm fortunate because I have a beautiful home to live in, pretty much paid for. I've got a car in the garage. I've got food in the refrigerator. I've got a pretty good life. But in the way that I had become accustomed, accustomed to living my life, it's, a, it's been a very, very challenging year. And my partner walked up to me a while back, maybe two months ago, and said, I'm really impressed at the way that you're managing all of this. And candidly, it's been a hell of a year. But you know what? It was a beautiful year. And I wouldn't trade this year for anything because what I've learned about spiritual growth and evolution, once you think you've got something mastered and you kind of sit back in your chair and you cross your arms, you're like, oh, I got that done. I figured that out. Another, another wave comes, whammo, and knocks you sideways. And I look at business and life and my home, which has been a big challenge energetically getting into it this year. And in 2020 and 2021, 2022, I lived in another beautiful home that I lived in and I built the one I moved into now and everything was hunky-dory great. But you know what? I thought I had let go of a lot, even more than what I had. And my partner said what they said to me and the exact words were, I'm really impressed at how well you manage this. And my comment was, well, I have two choices. I can hang on to shit and I can be attached to it, or I can let it go. And I choose to let it go. And the attachments that I were letting go, what was letting go of, was how easy business was supposed to be. And as I think I mentioned in the podcast, Don Javier came to me about three years ago. And he was talking about gratitude. And he said to me, he said, you need to be more grateful for your money. And I said, I am grateful for money. And he goes, I know you're grateful for money, but what I mean, you need to be grateful for how easy it comes to you. And it just shows up in your life. And a lot of it, millions of dollars. Well, 2023, I've done fine. I've done well. But it wasn't as easy as the years prior. And so in 2023, I had to examine, okay, if I'm not being happy about things, and by the way, when you're not happy, that's a frequency and you're attracting more not being happy and things that, that are tied to it and associated to it. But I recognized just total release. Let go of people, places, things, ideas, and expectations. And you've heard me say before, probably a dozen times over different episodes, the Buddha said our greatest source of unhappiness is attachment. We have to let go of attachment. And here's the, the challenge for us. When we get into attachment, we are attaching to a person, a place, a thing, 
an idea, even an expectation. Notice that a person, a place, a thing, an idea, or an expectation. And the problem with attaching to those any of what I just said is all of those things are external with the exception of the expectation, but a person, place, and thing, they're all external. And if we're happy because we have that attachment, at some point in your life, that attachment is going to change. For example, you could be attached to a person, then they leave the planet, and then look how many people go into grieving for sometimes years because they're attached to what they perceive that relationship to be and what they perceive they lost when that person left the planet. So when we attach to people, places, and things, that is a recipe for not being happy. It doesn't mean not having, you know, people and and places and things in our life. It simply means that we, it doesn't serve us to attach to those things. Okay, I want to segue from the episode for just one moment. And I want to ask you, where were you most stuck in 2023? What things held you back the most? When I ask people, you know, why they're not getting what they want in life, people often say, well, I was stuck with X, Y, Z, or, and this may resonate with you, I feel stuck. If you're feeling stuck, one question I want you to ask yourself is, what is it costing me? What is it costing me to not resolve this and to battle being stuck. And when you add that up, whether it's money and especially in business, but in your health and your relationships, when you add that up, it's extremely costly to be stuck in life. Now, all this being said, I created a new challenge. I created it last year. Many thousands of people have gone through it, and it's called the Get Unstuck Challenge. Interesting, the name's all about getting unstuck. Now, in this challenge, it's a nine-day challenge, and I walk you through at a very profound, at a very spiritual you know, level, and even at a cosmic level, I walk you through who and how you're being as a being, meaning your presence on the planet. And when you understand that, when you understand the nature of you at a very deep level, Now, you might have heard me say be to have before, and that's more about 3D reality. Who do you have to be so you can do so you can have? But I'm talking, you know, what does it mean to be? And then what is that power associated with that? When you understand that, you automatically get unstuck in life. This program never offered it before to you guys. We're offering it now. I don't think we've offered it to the podcast and an ad. Maybe we have, maybe we have. I don't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter because we haven't offered it a lot if we have. But we're offering the Get Unstuck Challenge again. It's only $97. Thousands of people have been through it, and they rave about the results they're getting, and I know that you will do the same thing. So, again, ponder the question, what does it cost me? What am I giving up? What peace of mind? What happiness? What money? What relationships am I giving up in life because I am stuck in my own crap? Now, as you're thinking about that, click the link, go to tcp.jimforten.com slash unstuck. Again, and we'll drop the link in the show notes, tcp.jimforten.com slash unstuck. Download the program, you get started right away, and your life will start changing dramatically. When you apply what you're learning in that program, your life will start changing in very dramatic ways, very, very quickly. And as a matter of fact, in the next nine days. Okay, back to the episode. Now, as I said, I want to give you some tidbits along the way. So what we want to look at is when I say, what are we attached to? What we want to look at is the fear underneath that. Because if we feel if we release something and let it go many times, something bad is going to happen. So what we do is we attach to something so that this something bad that we're attached, that we don't want to happen, we attach to these 
things. And then we, we worry that if we disattach, we disassociate, we break from this, then some fearful thing is going to happen. And that fearful thing could be, okay, if I disattach from my business, I'm not going to have any money. If I disattach from this marriage that I've been in for 15 years and I hate it, and people say that, but if I, if I don't attach to it and cling to it and hang on to it, then guess what? I'm not going to have security, which by the way, is an illusion in itself. I'm not going to have that. So notice that many times we are attaching to things and then our attachments are people, places, and things. And we're afraid to let go of the attachment because of the fear associated with having the attachment. Hopefully, as I said, I'm jumping around. Hopefully, I explained that really well to you guys. It's the question for you. What predominant states, and by the way, I don't expect you listening to this episode to go, oh, voila, shazam, the light hit me, hallelujah. Tomorrow, I'm going to be happy all day. Maybe, but what I'm really asking is just be mindful and that's paying attention to your emotional states because your emotional states are 3D and they are emotional, but see happiness comes through you as a frequency, as I say it, and I've heard it before somewhere many years ago, happiness is a factory setting. It comes inborn to the species. So you never see a baby, if a baby could, you know, talk coming out of the womb, you never see a baby popping out of the womb going, wait, wait, wait. There's no way I can pop out of the womb because if I do, then people are going to see me. And if I pop out of the womb and they see me, I'm going to be covered in blood. I'm probably going to be crying. People are going to hold me upside down. I don't even know if they do that or not. Just seen it. TV, they're going to hold me upside down and slap me in the ass or on the ass. Then what they're going to do is take a branding on and start branding me with religion and culturalization and family thought patterns and everything else. No. Infants come, we come with our karma and we come with the spiritual lessons that we are setting out to learn this lifetime. But infants aren't coming pissed off at the world. Infants aren't popping out of the womb and goes, who the hell had it so cold in this room? It's too bright in here. Turn down the lights, turn up the temperature, put some clothes on me, and all of you people get out of here. Infants aren't doing that. So factory setting, happiness, factory setting. But I want to go back to something I've said before. So we want to look at our emotional states, okay? Because if we're trapped in a negative emotional state, that's all 3D ego. That is not, not, not soul. That is not, which I'll talk about in a moment, knowing yourself as soul. What helped me tremendously is when Don Juan Matus said to me, I did a live on this last night for my inner circle in the transformational coaching program. The inner circle is an aspect of that program. And Don Juan Matu said to me in the 1990s, to me personally, that I had to learn to care about everything. And in the same moment, his exact words were, I need to learn to care about everything in my life. And in the same, no in the same moment, not give a damn about anything. And then we think about that conundrum. Well, okay, how do we do that? How do we care about everything and not care about things? So what I noticed over the years is, when I'm attached, I'm caring. When I am not attached, I am not caring. So I look at the illusions of what I'm attached to that I'm caring about. And then I, I look at things that I really don't care about and notice that I'm not attached and things that I'm not attached to and don't care about do not really cause me any emotional turmoil. That's where we want to be is in that state of mind and that state of peace, because then we have peace of mind which is one of the highest frequencies and vibrations that we can have. Something else, very quickly here, is that many of us, many of us, I don't anymore, I don't think I do, and 
I may have life come kick me in the rear end later and show me differently. And I, I'm kind of laughing at myself because no sooner than we speak something, the universe is like, oh yeah, I'll show you, buddy boy, buddy girl, buddy person. You think you're not XYZ? Well, I will show you. Anyway, I'll just say, and I can say this comfortably, relative to my awareness of what I have in my life and my situations and circumstances and people, I have let go of a lot of those things. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. It's simply important for me to live on purpose, to live in service, whatever that looks like. And every night when I go to bed, I don't ask for things. I simply say, you know, divine mind, like I said, is asking, show me my next step. What are other ways that I can serve people? What are ways that I can adjust? And I've said before, I have said this to myself in my own mind, whatever I have to give up to continue my mission, my sole mission on this planet, whatever I have to give up, no matter what it is, I'll do it. I'm on two and a half years now, and we're not done building this home. And if I had certain confirmation that Spirit said, hey, you know, Jim, you put two and a half years and a lot of time and energy and money and focus and awareness into building your new home. And by the way, it's never supposed to be this long. Never. Uh, it's never supposed to have been what it was. And Spirit said, hey, Jim, you got to give it all up tomorrow. Honestly, from the heart, I'm okay with that. Wouldn't be my favorite thing, mainly because I don't enjoy packing, even though we have uh, people come out and pack, but they can't touch my spiritual items, so I have to pack it all myself, and I have a lot of spiritual things. So, but if that were the case, and I had to say, okay, I do it. Why? Because I do not want things in my life that prevent me from living my soul mission. And where I was going there is so many of us are attached to security. And we are happy when we think we have security, which is all 3D ego personality. And we're not happy when we don't have security. The truth is this, security by 3D ego is an illusion. The only, there's only, only, only one security in your entire existence on this planet, that one security is this, are you ready for it? The only security that you will ever know and that is real on this planet is to know yourself as soul. Know yourself as divine being. You're not the ego. You're not the personality. You're not the human 3D identity. In TCP, the Transformational Coaching Program, there's two parts to it. There's what we call TCP, and we've always called it TCP, but we're changing the name in the near future to TCP1. And there's a second part titled TCP2. And TCP1 is all about managing ego things because we are on the planet. We have to manage those things. And then part two, TCP part two, is about completely letting go of all things that we identify with and evolving beyond all that. But see, we still have it because we're on the planet. So we have to learn how to manage what's on the planet without attachment that's why the higher part of us, the ethereal, soulful part of ourself is important and learning how, how to bring that down into the 3D part of us. And the 3D part of us is important because, hey, this is the container that I'm walking around. You know, I'm living in this container, this bag of skin on the planet. And when we learn to integrate and manage both, that, number one, is soulful awareness. But secondly, that is balance. And we have to create the balance while we are on the planet. So I said a bit ago, it comes down to some emotional awareness about at least starting you somewhere. 
because again, for the third time, I don't expect to go Shazam. And you're like, oh, okay, this is good. I'm a happy camper. I know myself as soul. May happen that way, but I doubt it. So I want to start at the 3D ego level, the identity level, the container of skin listening to me now, the consciousness, even though it's being, it's being channeled through the physical body, I want, to, I want to bring something to you to help you at least start getting some traction here. And I have six questions for you to help you actually start releasing or recognizing when you're into things that rob you of happiness. Okay, let's go to emotions first. When you are in your negative emotions, simply stop and ask yourself, is this negative emotion, but even positive, same thing, because they both apply to the 3D body. Is this emotion, by the way, question number one, as I just said, and I'll give you six, is this emotion my personality? Or is it my soul? Now, I want to point out that we are all soul at all times. But yet, living as soul, and I don't ever think we would ever live as only soul on the planet because we need the body to create. Your soul cannot manifest without the body. Your soul needs the carbon in the cosmology and reality we live in. Um, your soul needs the manifestation of the plasma and the carbon and the body to be able to manifest on this planet. It takes both the energy and the, uh, the physicalness, okay? But ask yourself, is this emotion my personality or is it my soul? Next, think about a thought that you're having that makes you unhappy or takes your happiness away. And ask yourself, is this thought, is this my personality or is it my soul? Think about physical sensations, maybe about not feeling good physically. And this was a big one for me when I was sick in 2020, is I had to learn how to separate my mind from the pain of my physical body. And I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, I, I've been very successful at learning and mastering with the guidance of Don Javier, disattaching from the body when it's in physical pain. Because if you are actually in the physical pain and you are engaged in the physical pain and feeling bad about it, then you're actually exacerbating the physical pain by keeping your attention on it and keeping all of your awareness on the physical pain. And I had to learn how to, and this is what I start calling, we, we start going into mental mastery, when we can actually master the mind over the body. But to the question I'm giving you, the physical experience or sensation you're having in the body, ask yourself, is this personality or is it soul? How about in your life? Something goes sideways. You don't like this. You don't like that. You don't like a circumstance. Is the circumstance a reflection of the physical you personality or of your soul? How about your entire body, the body that you are living in? You are not your body. And by the way, it took me a long time to really own that and get it and know it. I don't mean to understand, but I mean know it. Are you your body? No, you're not your body. So whatever is going on with your body, as I was alluding to earlier, ask yourself, is it my personality body going through this? Or is it my soul that's experiencing this pain or whatever it might be? And then question number six, is this my personality or my personality ego? Or is it my soul that this is coming from? So think about those. Is this emotion my personality? Is this thought my personality or soul? Is this physical sens sensation my personality or sen soul? Is this circumstance my, is it my personality or my soul? Is this body, is it my 3D human personality or is it my soul? 
this, whatever is going on inside my personality? Is that my ego or my soul? And when you ask yourself these questions, it will help you to better understand that I would request that you ask with frequency. Because when you do, it helps you better understand that, you know what? I'm not the ego. I'm not the physical body. The physical body is the medium through which my soul comes through. Think about that. Your physical body is the medium, the channel that your soul comes through. And we have to start knowing ourselves to create the happiness that we want because your soul, your soul frequency, do you think your soul is sitting up in some galaxy somewhere pissed off because this, that, or the other? No, your soul is not. Your soul is frequency and vibration of pure, unconditional, non-emotional, but frequency, love. Love, love, love. Now, full transparency, I guess applies to a lot of us on the planet. We're all, well, those of us that want to, learning to become that love. Because candidly, so many things can happen in life, as we all know. And we're like, well, that's really screwed up. That's really backwards. I don't like that. But that's not, that's not love. That's literally living from everything I just talked about. That's all tied to the 3D personality of the ego you. And that's what we want to let go of. There's a phrase that I live from and I'm working on, and I keep it in front of me daily. And I use it when something creeps up on me that is 3D ego, because I know the emotion already. If I'm not feeling good about something, that's all 3D ego. That's not my soul. And when it creeps up, the first thing I say to myself is, Jim, know yourself as soul. Would your soul be getting into X, Y, Z? Would your soul be bothered by ABC? Would your soul care about FG? And as you already know, because you're listening and you're probably thinking as I'm saying that, the answer is soul is saying no, no, no. So transformational takeaway is know yourself as soul. And that is self-realization. And there's a quote by Marana Maharishi. And um, Har Harishi. And he, I was trying to get that right. It's Har Harishi, I believe. And the quote is, your own self-realization is the greatest service you can render the world. Your own self-realization is your greatest service that you can render to the world, or the greatest service you can render to the world. And remember that I told you, I've said before in different episodes, we're here to serve and we're here to evolve and grow. And you will find, I promise you, when you get out of the ego self and you start thinking about helping other people live better lives, your own transformation is in that service. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you over on another episode. Bye-bye.